Hi, and welcome to Oil 101, the podcast. My name is Doug Stetzer, and I'm content and community manager for EKT Interactive. Today, we will be discussing the midstream segment of the oil and gas industry. This content was developed by industry experts with decades of experience. For more information about our free Oil 101 content, visit www.ektinteractive.com. This midstream overview includes segments on business characteristics, key participants, and discussions on the main functions of midstream of gathering, processing, transportation, and storage of crude oil and natural gas. We'll also be highlighting some of the differences between oil and gas at this phase. So, what is midstream? Midstream is the function of the oil and gas industry that provides the vital link between producing areas and the population centers where industrial, refining, and residential customers are located. Field gathering, processing plants, and transmission pipelines are the major assets in the midstream industry. Transportation assets include marine vessels, railroads, and trucking fleets. Storage assets also exist throughout this chain. With the commercial success of U.S. oil and gas shale plays, the midstream business segment has taken on new importance. A 2014 study forecasted the need for over $640 billion of investment in the next 20 years to leverage U.S. crude and natural gas shale supplies. So be sure to stay tuned to developments and opportunities in this major part of the oil and gas industry. The four key characteristics of the midstream segment is that it is generally low risk, it is highly regulated, especially the pipeline components, asset investments are dependent on the health of the upstream, and oil and gas prices affect demand. The business of moving oil and gas around is considered very low capital risk. Historically, in most integrated oil companies, the midstream segment was considered a small part of upstream and downstream operations. It wasn't until the 1980s that U.S. companies began spinning off these assets into publicly traded Master Limited Partnerships, or MLPs. The midstream field gathering and processing sector is relatively free of commercial regulation. However, interstate transmission pipelines and subsequent state and local gas distribution rates are highly regulated in the U.S. by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC. Midstream investment can become highly politicized and even subject to executive decision in the U.S. if the proposed infrastructure crosses an international border. This has been seen in the recent national debate on the Keystone XL segment that crosses between the U.S. and Canada. Midstream is literally stuck in the middle. It depends on both healthy upstream supply and strong consumer demand. Without a steady supply of oil and gas, there is nothing to process, transport, and store. On the other hand, without demand from downstream commercial, industrial, and retail consumers, the need to bring these supplies to market is diminished. This podcast episode is brought to you by EKT Interactive's Oil 101, a free introduction to oil and gas. Within this free members only content area, you'll find ebooks on oil and gas industry fundamentals, relevant articles on key oil and gas topics, and a growing body of digital learning content. Claim your free membership and join the Oil 101 Learning Community at www.ektinteractive.com today. So, who are the key players in midstream? With the growth of the MLP structure in the U.S., you'll notice that the large midstream companies aren't the familiar oil and gas companies. Some of the largest midstream MLPs are Plains All-American, Enterprise Product Partners, Kinder Morgan, TransCanada, and Spectra Energy. Some MLPs concentrate only on transmission pipelines, some on oil, and many on natural gas, and others on converting natural gas to high-valued NGLs or petrochemical feedstocks. And the energy MLP structure is solely a United States business entity. Globally, one of the largest operators of pipelines is OAO Transneft, 
the Russian state-owned transport monopoly. And there's a good list of other major pipeline operators throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa in Wikipedia. We'll be sure to put the link in the program notes. Now let's talk about the four major operating components of midstream. The first step in the midstream process is field gathering. Oil and natural gas production comes from thousands of wells. Oil is moved through a spider web of small diameter pipelines to a central location. Here, a tank volume large enough to efficiently be sent to a refinery by truck, pipeline, or barge, or even rail, is gathered. Natural gas is a little different. Unlike crude oil, it cannot be stored at or near the well. A series of smaller diameter pipelines moves it to a central treating or processing facility to remove water and impurities and separate out the NGLs. The natural gas, primarily methane, can then enter a large diameter transmission pipeline to be moved to end users. Field processing requires surface units that are designed and installed to measure the production rate of oil and gas and water from the reservoir, separate the oil and gas from the wastewater, remove any impurities, and temporarily store it until it's ready to be moved. Fractionation plants separate the high-valued natural gas liquids, or NGLs, from natural gas production. These NGLs are used as blend components in refineries and as feedstock in the manufacture of petrochemicals. And be sure not to confuse NGLs with LNG, or liquefied natural gas, which we'll discuss in the transportation section. After field processing, treated oil and natural gas is delivered via a huge and complex transportation, pipeline transmission, and distribution infrastructure. In the U.S., there are hundreds of thousands of miles of natural gas, crude oil, and liquids pipelines. Natural gas, which flows at a much higher pressure than crude oil, is most often transported in large diameter inter- and intrastate regulated pipelines. LNG is natural gas that has been converted to a liquid for easier transport and storage. This occurs when the gas is cooled to approximately minus 162 degrees Celsius or minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. Large LNG vessels are used to transport natural gas for international shipments. To transport crude oil, Pipelines are also the safest and most efficient shipment method. However, truck and rail are more flexible in terms of timing and being able to ship to alternative and multiple destinations. Today, in the U.S., the importance of rail cannot be underestimated. Most U.S. shale oil plays do not have access to the existing pipelines. For example, there is very little infrastructure in oil plays such as the Bakken in North Dakota. Therefore, over 75% of the million or so barrels a day of Bakken production is moved by rail. Storage for crude oil and refined products is pretty straightforward. Methods include field tank batteries, product bulk terminals, refinery tanks, and holding tanks. But natural gas is different. Because of its large volumes and high pressures, natural gas is generally stored underground until it is ready to be transported to market. Depleted gas reservoirs salt caverns, and aquifers are common storage facilities. Thanks for listening, and we hope you've learned a few things about the midstream segment of the oil and gas industry. Be sure to share this as you see fit and review us on iTunes if you have a chance. Your feedback really helps us improve as we move forward. If you want more information about our Oil 101 Microbes to Markets content, go to www.ektinteractive.com and register to access our free content library. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.